Hi there, this is Utkarsh here and we are on to reading 63, the most exciting part of CFA level 1 derivative, option markets and contracts. Now, what is so different about options? Now, what you need to really understand here is that in the earlier case, when we had forwards in future, okay, so let's say that we have a forward contract. Now, we saw that there were two possible sides that you could take, either long or short. And the person who was long on a forward contract, he had right and obligation to buy and the person who was short he had right and obligation again to sell now the major difference as against forwards with options is that in case of long you can see that he's got right and obligation both right so when you are long on forward contract you would want prices to increase so when prices increase you benefit out of that transaction it's a right but when prices decrease, you are going to lose out of that transaction and therefore it's an obligation. So since when it's increasing, you're making profit. When it decreases, you're making losses. And therefore we say that these contracts are symmetrical in nature. That the payoffs can be on both the sides. The difference with options is that it is going to break down this forward into two parts. So in options, we can have four possible sides. So we can have only a right to buy we can have only an obligation to buy so this right is divided separately this obligation is divided separately we can only have a right to sell or we can have an obligation to sell okay so now let's convert the whole options into a nice flowchart which will help us build understanding so options can possibly of two types we can have either call options or we can have put options. So as of now, we'll purely focus on call options. Again, on call options, you can take two possible sides. When you purchase a call option and think of call option as a piece of paper, it's an agreement, it's a financial instrument. So when you purchase a call option, you're said to be long on call. And when you sell this call option, when you sell this particular piece of paper, you're said to be short on call. Now, every call option, or every option will come with a strike price attached to it okay so the way we had contract price in case of forwards and futures in case of options we will have strike price so let us say in our example the strike price is 100 what does long means that long on either call or on put generally gives the person only a right whereas if you when you're short you're only going to have an obligation but when someone is long on call option, he will have a right and this right will be to buy. When someone is short, he will have an obligation and now this obligation would be to sell. And since you would be acquiring a right, this right is not going to come free of cost. This person is taking an obligation. He is not going to take that obligation free of cost. So this person would be required to give, long party would be required to give some compensation to the short and that is called as premium. So a person who is long on call option is the one who would pay premium and the person who is short on call option would be the one to receive premium. Okay, so let's do a nice example. Let us say that there is a particular call option where underlying asset is some equity. The strike price is 100 and premium of that option is 10. Now you might wonder that how this premium is calculated will go to that part later on but as of now simply assume that premium is 10. So what it means is that by paying 10 rupees to the short and short by receiving this 10 rupees, short has undertaken this obligation to sell this particular asset at 100 and long has purchase this right to buy this particular asset at 100 at a future date. So let us say what is that future date? That future date is 3 months. Okay, so what happens after 3 months? We will consider likely scenarios. So let us say scenario number 1, scenario number 2, 3, 4 and 5. So what happens in scenario number 1 is that spot price, that means price of this underlying asset 3 months down the line, let us say turns out to be 170 scenario number two that spot price turned out to be 130 scenario number three spot price is 100 scenario number four spot price is 40 and scenario number five spot price is zero so what we're basically saying is that the price of the underlying asset is going to fluctuate from 
the day this is a day on which you entered the contract now the price of underlying asset is going to fluctuate so it might either increase or decrease so in this case it has increased 170 130 and in these cases it has decreased now what happens to the long call is the moment you come across the word call whether it's long or short what you want to think is right to buy okay so you always want to think from the perspective of long because that's going to help you strengthen your thinking process so the moment call option comes to you you brain should say right to buy okay so right to buy at what right to buy at 100 some asset which is currently trading in the market at 170 you have a right to buy that asset at 100 will you buy of course yes because you can buy it at a cheaper price so when you do this what is the amount of benefit amount of benefit is 70 but you've already paid premium of 10 to acquire this particular right so your net profit now 70 minus 10 is 60 when the price in the market is 130 this is scenario number two and you have a right to buy at 100 will you buy <coughs> yes and when you buy again your benefit is 30 but you've paid premium of 10 so your net benefit is 20 when the price in the market is 100 and you have a right to buy at 100 this right in a way is valueless because even without buying this particular financial instrument you could have still purchased the asset at 100 three months from today which means that this 10 rupees that you paid to acquire this right was useless it's being wasted so now you're actually making a loss of 10 rupees here when the price in the market is 40 you have a right to buy at 100 and now the question is will you buy and the answer is no because it is only a right there is no obligation the person who is long can simply decide not to exercise this option so what happens in that case is that the premium that he has paid which was 10 in this case would be the amount of loss that he would be incurring because this premium is not being put to use so when the price is 40 his loss is going to be 10 and this is the major difference between forwards and futures because had this been a forward contract then the person which was long on forward or future would be required to purchase the asset at 100 and in that case he would have made a loss of 60 here which is the difference between 40 and 100 but because this is not a forward contract because this is a option and we know that options are asymmetrical it only gives a right or obligation when the price is 40 long call is not going to exercise that and in that case the only amount of loss that is going to incur is minus 10 when the price in the market is zero even in that case long call would decide not to exercise the option and still the amount that he is going to lose is 10 so see now that this table should make you feel really powerful okay so what is it implying to you that there exists an asset in the market you can go and purchase that asset at only rupees 10 and when the prices are increase increasing okay so let's say that on a lucky day there is an infinite amount of possibility or infinite amount of profit that can be extracted out of this option because the prices can increase from 100 to 170 they can become 200 they might become 2000 they might become 20000 there is no upside limit on how much prices can increase in a theoretical world but in case the prices decrease the maximum loss that you're going to have is only the amount of premium that you've paid and therefore what we say is that when you're long on call the maximum amount of profit that can possibly be made is unlimited but the maximum amount of loss that you can make is only and only restricted to the amount of premium but let's think from the perspective of short call what is happening to him in this scenario that he's got an obligation to sell okay so that means whether he would be required to sell or not it is going to be dependent based on what action long decides to do so when the price in the market was 170 long decided to exercise and therefore short would be obliged to sell at 170 so now some asset which is trading in the market at some asset which is trading in the market at 170 short would be required to sell that asset at 100 he would make a loss of 70 but he's already received a premium of 10 that means his net loss is going to be 60 now what you can clearly see is that profit of long is the loss of 
shot here and which would always be the case these two are counterparties of each other so whenever short makes losses that's the profit of long and whenever long makes losses that's the profit of short scenario number 2 when the price was 130 in that case he had an obligation to sell an asset at 100 which was being priced at 130 so his loss was 30 but he had already received premium of 10 so his net loss was 30 minus 10 it was 20 and again 20 and 20 is being matched when the price was turned out to be 100 the long would simply decide not to exercise this and in that case short what short gets to do is he gets to keep this amount of 10 rupees as premium so it profits is in this case is going to be 10 so now we can see that loss of long is equal to profit of short when the prices are 40 now the question is that I have an obligation to sell at 100 but I would not be required to do that because long will decide not to exercise his right and if long decides not to exercise then I would not be required to sell at 100 which simply means that when the prices are decreasing what is going to happen is that that premium amount that I have received that's the amount that I'm going to have for myself so I get to keep this 10 I get to keep this 10 in both the scenarios so profit here is 10 and 10 so now you need to remember this that profit of long is going to be loss of short and vice versa because these are exact counterparties of each other again second thing that you should notice here is that long was making profit when the prices were increasing where a short was making profit when the prices were decreasing therefore we say that this is a bullish position you would want prices to increase when you are long call whereas when you are short call you would want prices to decrease so this is a bearish position this is Utkarsh Jain. Let's meet on part 2 of this video presentation.